Hey everyone, today I will be showing you how I draw and paint this coastal town called Amalfi in Italy. This is actually one of the filming locations for Tenet, the movie directed by Christopher Nolan. So this is actually a town that is located at the mouth of this ravine. And there are a lot of cliffs as you can see and these are the houses the buildings there and these are really beautiful by the way the app that i'm using is google earth it's a free app you can go download it type in the location that you want and it will let you fly around now this scene is going to be very challenging because there are a lot of details like there are just too many buildings so for my sketch i will probably um, I'm going to try to simplify this scene as much as possible. If you want to draw with Google Earth, make sure you take a screenshot first because if you accidentally touch the display, your tablet, the scene, the perspective is going to change. So I'm going to take this screenshot and work from this screenshot that I have here. By the way, I'm using gouache today because I was really inspired by this online art course that I had taken recently. And this course is by Maru Godes. She is so good with gouache. So um, if you want to learn more about using gouache, definitely check out this course. It's on Domestica. I have the link for you in the video description below. Let me show you the tools I'll be using today. I'll be using mechanical pencils to draw the line art. This is the Pilot Mechanical Pencil H329. This one has the 0.9 mm lead. This is H327 for 0.7 and this is 0.5. These are mechanical pencils I've been using for years. These are Corinor Polycolor colored pencils. Winsor & Newton Designer's Gouache that I don't use very often. This set has six colors, so we'll be mixing all the colors using these six colors. All right, let's start by drawing the tallest structure here, which is the Amalfi Cathedral. I'm going to draw this small so that I can fit um, other elements, other buildings in the scene. I don't usually use gouache, um, so this is going to be a challenge for me. And later on, when I paint over the line art with gouache, this, I mean, the line art should disappear. Okay, the Google Earth image that I'm working with is not particularly high res because it's actually not a photograph. So let's see what we have here. There is another um, very iconic building on the right side. I think it's a museum or, s or something. I'm going to draw the buildings uh, with as little detail as possible because um, to draw so many details, it's going to be even more challenging. Okay, so we have this part here. What I like about this particular scene is there is a lot of foreground and background elements. So the buildings in the foreground are actually overlapping the buildings in the background. Now using gouache uh, actually will make you think differently. There are a lot of wonderful gouache uh, artists out there. Uh, okay, let's see what we have here. This looks like a balcony with a door, a roof here. You know what? Perhaps with the roof, I will draw with either the red or the orange color pencil to help me basically identify the roof. Okay, we have another roof here. I think this works very well. Using this color pencil to help me identify the roof is very helpful. And for the buildings, the edges of the buildings, I will draw with pencils. 
This cold press watercolor paper is a bit too rough for color pencil work. So ideally, color pencils are they work better on smoother paper like hot press watercolor paper. Usually I draw from left to right, but in this case I have to draw the cathedral first because it's the largest element. So I'm drawing from right to left. Marking out all the roofs using a different color actually um, helps me, uh, prevents me from getting lost. Because if I were to draw everything with pencil, it's very easy to get lost in the details. You may notice the reference photo that I took earlier, it's not as wide as what you see here. So I actually have to go back to the Google Earth app to pan around to see what's uh, here to fill up this area. I've already squeezed out some of the gouache and they are mixed with some of the leftover watercolor from the earlier painting session. So the first thing I want to paint is maybe the roof. With gouache, I guess you can work from light to dark or dark to light. It doesn't really matter. So let's mix some, uh, mix the roof color. I may have to use more paint to get the opacity. Or maybe I can add more white. So when I draw the lines with colored pencils and I paint over with gouache, the line art sort of disappears. So instead of coloring this with orange, let me just draw the roof with this colored pencil. You can see how blunt this pencil is. Let me draw more roofs here and use the red pencil as well. So some of the roofs I will just leave them as line art whereas some of the roofs I will just paint over them. There are just too many, just way too many houses there to draw. So I'm just going to maybe just represent some of the roofs with just horizontal lines or horizontal rectangles. At this stage, I'm actually not drawing exactly what I see. I'm just placing the lines, the orange and the reds where I think they are. Just, there are just way too many buildings to draw each one. The light source is coming from the left, but I'm not sure if I want to paint any shadows for this particular sketch. I used too much water here, so you can still see the line art because if you use too much water, it's going to be transparent. By the way, gouache is not totally opaque, so if I add more paint, it's going to look like this. So using this color, I'm going to paint the shadow side for some of the buildings. I would actually prefer to have a raw sienna. Is this white enough? No, it's still too transparent. You can see it's very transparent. Adding the white definitely helps with the opacity. So right now, I'm actually not sure what I'm painting. Um, I'm a bit lost, so maybe this is not going to be a very realistic sketch. It's more like an impressionist sketch. This building here can be light or pale yellow. Right, let's have some green mixed with some red. So this town is actually in a ravine. 
And now for some gray, so for the gray, I will mix the three primaries together and we'll see what we can get. Let me use that to paint the road here. This should be gray or dark gray. This sketch is not looking too good, <laughs> but it's okay. This is a light blue green. The mine looks uh, blue now. I think it's all right. So when it's dry later, maybe I will just draw some line art over the blue to give it more details. And now I can add all the windows using black. So painting all the little windows, um, that is very challenging. Painting more roofs. I'm actually just dabbing paint onto the paper. Maybe it would be easier to just use pencils to draw the windows. This is actually not easy to paint if you don't have any planning in advance. So this is the completed sketch. Now on the high side, I probably shouldn't have drawn such a wide scene. I probably should have just focused on a smaller area, but draw everything bigger just to practice my gouache. It's actually quite intimidating to draw all these details while trying to figure out how to use gouache. So now I'm using this ballpoint pen to add some additional details. So for the buildings in the background, um, those tiny buildings, uh, those are really challenging to draw. So all these are actually just suggestions uh, of the details. So even for the buildings in the foreground, I did not have too much uh, details for them. This will make the window more interesting rather than uh, having it as a black box. The black here against the uh, orange or brown uh, surface, it's a bit too striking. The contrast is just too strong. Probably should have just used a darker brown. And if I were to correct this right now, um, it's going to make this look even worse, so uh, let me just leave this as it is. It's very difficult to paint all the tiny details with, uh, with gouache. Let me make this stand out a bit more by adding some white. Maybe I can use pencils to add some details. While drawing and painting this, I was constantly thinking about how I can play with the positive and negative shapes. So before I paint, I have to think, should I use a darker color now so that later on I can use a lighter color over this darker color? Or should I use a lighter color now so that later on I can paint something darker or draw something with my pencil later on? I think it's this constant play of positive against negative shapes that make the sketch that makes the art look more interesting. So you can see here all the roofs they were painted with positive shapes but once in a while if you have a roof that has negative shapes like this it's going to stand out. It's going to look more interesting. Alright, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye!